With the explosion of popularity of AIML workload comes the heavy demand of accelerators like GPUs. Getting access to these resources in time can be the difference between success and failure. And even when you can get the resources, sometimes you get some of the resources you need and you're still waiting for the rest of the resources to become available before the workload even starts. I'm Ali. I'm Mofi. And let's talk about Dynamic Workload Scheduler. Dynamic Workload Scheduler, or DWS, is a new feature we are adding to GCP for obtainability of the sought-after resources like accelerators. This works across GCP, Batch, GKE, and Vertex AI. Today, we're going to mostly focus about GKE. DWS comes in two modes, Calendar Mode and Flex Start Mode. Calendar Mode provides job start time assurance with future reservations. These are useful for periodic fine-tuning or training of your model. Flex Start Mode lets you define a workload that will start sometime in the future. This allows for optimized economics and higher obtainability for sought-after resources. Use cases for Flex Start Mode includes time-flexible experiments, fine-tuning, and batch infants. Let's take a look at the Flex Start Mode in a bit more detail. Say as a user, I want to run a multi-node training job using two A2 VMs with eight NVIDIA A100 GPUs each for 15 hours in the US Central One region. And there are many other jobs like this with various requirements on the resources as well as the time that they would require to process. The figure on the left shows how job queuing works today, where jobs are queued based on their arrival time. In this pattern, the location, such as the region or zone, does not get a chance to effectively bin pack workloads to maximize resource utilization. But if the workloads are flexible in their start times, the location is able to fit a lot more workloads in the same given resource footprint, making the most out of those resources. This allows each location to handle more jobs looking for these highly sought after on-demand resources. When a job is created through DWS, a provisioning request is created to queue the job. From there, it waits until all the required resources available before your job is scheduled. If for any reason it cannot provision that resources, your job will then fail and you have the option to retry the job to try to queue it again. Once DWS finds all the new resources required to start your job, your job would be moved to running. From there, if the job completes successfully, your job will be succeeded. Or if it fails for any reason, it will be set to failed. And from there, you could retry once again to queue your job through DWS again. To get started with DWS on GKE, you can create a new node pool with the enable queued provisioning flag, or you can update an existing node pool. Let's take a look at DWS in action. Here we have a GKE standard cluster with two node pools, our default pool with all the system pods running and our GPU pool, which is our DWS enabled node pool that currently has zero nodes. Here, we're creating a provisioning request. This provisioning request allows our pod to run for up to 900 seconds, which is about 15 minutes. In flex start mode, you can allow your workload to run up to seven days. So this is useful for running large training or fine tuning workload. In here, we also have a pod template reference where we create a placeholder pod template that will be used in the backend to create the resources and provision the right GPUs for your workload. In our job definition, we let our job know which provisioning request it can use using these annotations. The rest of the job definition is business as usual. The only difference being the tolerations that we need to add to schedule our job on nodes created by DWS. Let's create our provisioning request and the job. Cube control apply dash F provisioning request control apply dash f job dot yaml what give control get provisioning request we can see our provision request right now is not yet accepted and the resource that we require is also not yet provisioned now you can see our provisioning request has been accepted and we're still waiting on the resources to be provisioned here we can see that gke finally found the necessary four nodes required to start our workload so four new nodes has been scheduled and are ready and our workload is now provisioned. Here we can see that our pods has completed running and our nodes are still sitting around for other workload to come in. 
By default, provisioning request does not remove the nodes until max run duration seconds is exceeded. But since our workload has completed, we can manually remove our provisioning request by running kip delete dash f provisioning request. After the provisioning request has been removed, the cluster will then set those nodes that are no longer in use to not ready and eventually remove them. So while this method of consuming DWS on GK totally works, Q provides a much smoother user experience. Let's take a look at it. To get started, we've already installed Q with DWS enabled on this cluster. Here you can see the resources that we're going to use to configure Q, such as the resource flavor, cluster Q, and local Q. But we also introduce two new resources, such as the admission check, which gets referenced in the cluster Q and is defined as so. Here you can see the controller name is provisioning request. We also define a provisioning request config, which automates the process of managing a provisioning request on the user's behalf. In the job labels, you'll find a reference to the local queue with queue as always. But in addition, you'll notice the annotation that specifies the maximum duration a provisioning request can live for. Let's apply this job with cube control apply dash f job dash q dot yaml. A new job, sample job has been created. We can see the status of the provisioning request with kube control get provisioning request. We'll see a new provisioning request called job dash sample dash job has been created on our behalf. We can also watch for the nodes getting created. And see right now we only have three nodes. No GPU node has been created because our provisioning has not yet occurred. Here, we can see that our nodes are finally coming up. Here we see our provisioning request is provisioned set to true. Four new nodes has come up and our pods are now pending, which we'll soon schedule on the right nodes once they come up. We can see all four of our pods are finally running. The job itself is the same one. It's uh, running for about two minutes. After that is going to com be completed and it will exit. After about two minutes, we would see all the jobs are now completed. And one other thing that just happened is our provisioning request also got removed by Q. This means after some time, our nodes will also be going away because there is no more provisioning request asking for those nodes to stay around. After some time, Cluster Autoscaler will automatically get rid of these nodes so you no longer pay for them. We can see all the nodes are now removed. So in this video, we learn what DWS is and how to get started. In the next video, we'll see how to integrate DWS with our batch reference architecture to showcase how to fine tune a large language model using DWS on GKE.